When growing up, I had a misconception. A misconception that the past doesn't matter. That regardless of what we have done or who we were, as long as we looked at the future that was bright, that everything was okay. But as I said, it was a misconception. A lie that I told myself. And when I heard James Baldwin say, and I quote, It is our history that defines us. We are our history. I truly realized who I am. I am a Tibetan refugee. Welcome to Tibet History Podcast. This is a podcast where I explore the truth about the history of Tibet and where we learn more about our history and ourselves. Myths. What are myths? According to Yul Noah Harari in his book Sapiens, myths are stories that contain ideas that unite a great number of people together. For example, the Bible is a set of myths and ideas which is used to unite millions of people from all over the world into a belief that Christ is the saviour of mankind. The story of Nyat Zimbal is also a myth and has played an integral part in shaping the Tibetan society. Today we'll explore the story of Nyat Zimbal and why this myth has stayed with Tibetans for almost two millennia. Before I tell you the story, I'd like to warn you that Tibetan stories can be bland compared to Western ones. And it may seem that it lacks richness, but as far from reality, because there are reasons why they were written the way they were. So let's start with the story. Nyarasimpo was born a prince in eastern India. He was born with such stigma that his father wanted him dead as soon as he was born. His father ordered his soldiers to kill the infant, but the soldiers put the infant in a basket and threw him into the river. Later, a farmer found the prince and raised him. The farmer told the prince the truth when he reached adulthood. The prince was so shocked by the news that he fleed crossing mountains, hills, valleys and rivers and finally reaching the Yalong Valley. And in Yalong Valley he saw some Tibetans. And when the Tibetans saw Nyat Simpo, they became very curious of his appearance. So they asked him in Tibetan and said, Where are you from? Nyat Simpo didn't understand Tibetan and maybe out of fear he raised his hand and pointed to the sky. The Tibetans became astounded and carried him and declared him as an emperor of the Yalong Valley. The Tibetans believed that Nyat Zimbo descended from heaven. As Harari said, every myth has an idea ingrained in it. What is the idea in the story? At first I just thought it was a regular story. But as I reread the story and read other books about Tibet, I stumbled upon another story and it became quite clear what the story is trying to convey. Before I give you the idea, let me tell you the other story. I read this in a book by Tom Grunfield in Making of Modern Tibet. It is said to have occurred in 797 AD after the death of Trizong Desen. It is said that Muni Zimpo attempted to redistribute wealth to all Tibetans only to discover that the wealthy grew wealthier and the poor poorer. When the king complained of this problem to Gurumbuche, Gurumbuche replied, Our condition in this lifetime is entirely dependent upon our actions of our previous lives. Nothing can be done to alter the scheme of things. Our destiny is predetermined. That is the idea of the true stories. And that is what most Tibetans believe. As Tibetans, we believe in Sonam which are merits of our past lives, and is believed that the merits of our past lives determine our lives in the present. Which means, according to Tibetan belief, Nyat Simpo was meant to be the emperor of Tibet. And although this belief did encourage people to be kind to each other, but unfortunately, according to Tom Grunfield in his book Making of Modern Tibet, this belief was fabricated by rich Tibetan nobles who were relatives of kings and important lamas to justify the riches compared to majority of Tibetans who lived in poverty, rampant with diseases. To further strengthen his argument, he claims Tibet, without sanitary conditions and modern healthcare, was not a good place to live. He says that venereal diseases affected 90% of the population and smallpox affected one-third of the population, which also included the 13th Dalai Lama. I know we imagine Tibet as being a paradise, 
which is far from reality. It's hard to bear, but in order to move forward, we have to realize who we are, and we have to realize that our destiny is not predetermined. We can decide for ourselves for a bright future that all Tibetans can look forward to. Thank you for listening to Tibet History Podcast. We explore the truth about the history of Tibet. If you think any information is inaccurate, feel free to correct me in the discussion page on Facebook at Tibet History. There is also a link in the description box below. I want to find out and share the truth about Tibet, especially to Tibetans. So please help me in this endeavor. Thank you.